Hello, my teacher friends. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to use Google Meet to have a, uh, an online virtual classroom with your students. Uh, for this, uh, you're going to need to go to meet.google.com. Uh, this website is usable from all of our Chromebooks, from any web browser. So everybody has it. It's free and it's a really invaluable resource when you're trying to facilitate these online virtual learning sessions. With this, I'm going to show you how to um, start by looking at your mic settings. In the upper right-hand corner, we have this gear icon. Uh, you click on that, and this pops open a window, so you can check to see if your microphone, your speakers, and if your uh, video is working. So uh, here I have a mic headset on. I can tell it's working because the wave uh, icon is moving as I'm talking, and that's really what you're looking for. Uh, you might have several different microphones available to you, um, so you want to switch them out, make sure you got the one that works the best for you. As long as you have that wave icon, you know the sound's working. You can test your speakers here by uh, clicking on the test icon. I'm not going to do it right now because it's really loud and annoying, and I don't really want to put you through that. And then, of course, you get your video. Uh, the video that comes with your Chromebook or comes with your, uh, your laptop should work just fine. In this case, I'm using a document camera because uh, the computer I have at home doesn't have uh, a video camera. So your document camera, um, you have a wide variety of... Uh, of video devices to work with. Um, but once you have video, uh, well, assuming you want video, you could also just not do video. Um, as long as they can hear your voice and they can see what you're presenting, that's what's important. Uh, so the video is optional. And that goes for the students too. So once you have all those settings uh, the way you want them and you're and you're happy with them, that, that should be the big tech barrier uh, that might keep you from doing this. But once you have those set up, you should be good to go. Click on Done. Now in here, I'm going to show you how to start a meeting right away and then share it with your students, uh, probably something like email or using Google Classroom. Uh, and then later on, I'm going to show you how to schedule them for, for the future. Uh, so I'm going to click on Join or Start a Meeting. I'm just going to call it Demo Meeting. Click Continue. And that, that has created the demo. Uh, camera starts up. <clears throat> now I'm in the demo. Uh, and it started, but uh, I haven't actually like uh, joined it myself uh, or invited anybody else to do that. Uh, so I'm going to start by just clicking Join Now. Now, once I'm in here, uh, it gives me the information that I have to share with students for them to join my classroom. So I'm going to click Copy Joining Info, and then I'm going to jump over to my Google Classroom going to just post it here. So from here, uh, I've just shared with all of the students in my in my classroom uh, the link to the meet. Um, I've also uh, given them phone information. So theoretically, if your kids don't have access to reliable internet, they can even hop on the phone just to hear the lecture uh, and, and keep up with you there. Um, close that. Um, you have uh, other options as well. Um, up in the uh, upper right hand corner. Uh, so I'm going to use this Chromebook. Oh, come on over here. I have a Chromebook next to me and I'm going to use the Chromebook to have a demo student join. And here we go. We have a student that has joined. The first thing I do is mute that student so I don't get the double feedback. That was a little annoying. Uh, yeah, so as your, as your people enter, you might want to either have them mute or mute themselves, or you mute them. Otherwise, you have you know, you know, twenty people talking at once. That could be a little hectic. Um, one utility you might want to use is the chat feature. Uh, perhaps you could ask your students uh, uh, to um, ask, ask any questions via the chat, and then you can answer them answer them that way. Um, that's just kind of one way to do it. Yeah, then the next thing you could do is um, record meetings. So suppose you're using this to show a lesson and uh, you want to repeat this lesson or make it available for people who aren't there live. Um, from the main screen, you can click the, the triple dots at the bottom right-hand corner, and you can click on the record button. So the record button, uh, once you click that, it prompts you to ask for consent, make sure people know it's just a polite thing to do if you're going to record the session. Uh, click on Accept. Uh, bottom left-hand corner says recording will start soon. And then once that finishes setting up, 
you'll get a record icon in the upper left hand corner and then everybody uh, has that icon as well so they all know it's being recorded i'll show you where this goes when we're done but this will uh, store to your google uh, google drive kind of handy so once you're all set up you're recording um, everybody's in your session you can click on present now what that does is allows you to um so, so right now we're, we're all in this meeting and we're all talking we're chatting we can have a conversation but if you actually want to show things um, then you're going to want to show like a slideshow presentation for example um, you click on present now um, i would suggest using um, present a window as opposed to showing your whole screen uh, presenting a window lets you um, limit uh, the field of view so if you're on a massive you know, 70 inch touchscreen at work and your students are looking on a a very small Chromebook, um, the resolution would be such that they really couldn't read what you're showing. So I would suggest uh, just showing a window. And in this case, I'm just going to show this screen here, which is just a this Chrome browser. Uh, and everything in this browser is being streamed to all the people that are in this classroom session. So they're seeing all of this. So I could present this tab or, or this Chrome browser and then pop over to a uh, slideshow presentation and then um, you know, give my lecture, show what I want to show. All of this being recorded so I can take parts of this or the whole thing, uh, post it to the Google Classroom later, and that'll let me, uh, let, let students revisit it, which is kind of handy. And you can also um, let them um, see it if they, for some reason, weren't able to get online or if they dropped off because they had a technology issue. Uh, when you're done with that, you can go back to the Google Hangouts or, or Google Meet uh, page and you can stop presenting, um, which, which puts you back in this mode where everybody can see everybody and everybody can chat with everybody. So if you want to go from presenting mode to discussion mode, you can do that. And then when you're done with all of that, you can stop the recording. Prompt you if you want to stop, say yes. And uh, from there, all of your recordings are going to be dropped into a folder in your drive called Meet Recordings. It takes a few minutes to get here. Um, Google seems to have to um, uh, process it before it's made available. But once you have that, you have the whole meeting available. So you can edit it later, take the parts of it that have your lecture, post that back to classroom, reuse that if you need to later. Um, it's kind of, kind of handy, uh, handy little feature for that. Uh, but that's the overview of how to use Google Meet. Um, so you can start a session, invite students, and have them um, ha have them participate that way. The next thing I want to show you is how to schedule these meetings. So if you are on your um, your Google Calendar, <clears throat> then you can uh, set up a meeting in the future. So just like you create any other meeting uh, in your Google Calendar. And then click on more options. Uh, you give it a title. Um, down here, there's an option that says add conferencing. Click that drop down. Click Hangouts. And then um, it's going to give you the web address for, for joining this Hangout. Um, for guest, you can invite guest. So uh, whatever the name of your Google Classroom is, you can invite that whole classroom and everybody who's in that classroom will receive a meeting invite, uh, letting them know what this uh, Hangout Meet uh, web address is, uh, the meeting ID and the phone number. Uh, click on save. It prompts you, do you want to invite them? Say yes. Everybody will get an invite in their, in their Google Calendar. Um, I would also publish that link to your Google Classroom. Some students uh, are, are actually looking at the calendar, some are not. Um, so I was just putting both places just to make it a little easier. Then the next time you go over to Google Hangouts, uh, I'm going to go ahead and exit this meeting. Go back to the home screen. Um, I still have the join or start a meeting, but the, the demo that I scheduled in my calendar shows up here. So it makes it just like one step easier for me to start the meeting. And it, it lets me uh, prepare the meeting invite uh, with the web address ahead of time so everybody in the classroom has a chance to find it and they have it queued up. Um, so I, I would suggest scheduling them 
and then sharing them via Google Classroom or sharing them uh, via Calendar, uh, whichever works best for you. Um, but you have that option to uh, to um, uh, to schedule the meeting and then have it available. It's important to practice this a couple times before you're relying on it. You, you don't want the first time you're running this live to be the first time you've done it. So get together with a couple people, create a session, have people join, practice it, see what it looks like on your side as well as the student side so that you feel confident using it and you're comfortable. Uh, doing it once or twice will just make this go so much smoother for you. If you have questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.